because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. So now, let's get into our last topic. Our last topic is affirmative action, okay? Now, um, many people are not talking about this, but I think it's important for us to go down this yellow brick road because the affirmative action bill was put into place because of the discrimination and the hate. I actually made a, um, a comment on how we should be paying attention to this and not just the student loan forgiveness as black people because we won't have a chance to be part of a student loan anything if we are discriminated on obviously now someone replied to me and said oh well what you think you need affirmative action to get into college no it's not about you no know, he said what you think you're not smart enough black people not smart enough and you know people use these black people or these trolls use these sidelining ass comments to try to get you to go to the left and i said never do i never think that black people are not intelligent or can't create but what i will tell you when you're in a system with people who are innately hate you and they can't help it because they have their demons this is what's going to happen People behave what's in their soul, not exactly what the uh, political connect for correctness of society makes them, okay? Just like what we just saw. The police officers know what the, they're supposed to do. They know their position and everything. So it doesn't matter their position. It was an innate hate within them that they had to go demonstrate this type of behavior and do this to the person. Hold on one second. And do this to that gentleman. So again... Affirmative action is important because we have a lot of people in high ranking position because this is a good old boy system, meaning that a lot of positions, money, property, a whole lot of stuff was passed down generation to generation, as well as thought patterns, behaviors, and unjust ways of living, okay, was passed down through generation to generation. And with that goes to say, we do suffer and we we have the blunt end of that as black people. So that does not mean we don't have the capability, but when you're set up against a whole system that's ran by others and not you, baby, this is why people fought to get the affirmative action bill in, okay? So now that we know that Florida is actually pulling back on its diversity, which we saw the writing on the wall, Okay, they're pulling on that diversity and um, inclusion, uh, education, material, rules, and all types of stuff. We have other states following suit. So, again, what's going on here? This is in North Ohio, and um, they're going to, they're reacting to the Supreme Court. Okay, so this made it all the way up. I just for Supreme Court outlaws affirmative action in college admissions. Okay, so. The next person said to me, so, um, oh, what do I do? Do you do black people need help? Like, do we need the help? You're damn right. I mean, when you got a bunch of us that, that they keep our hands out, they got a democratic mind, not a republic mind, not saying republican mind, but a republic mind, meaning that do for self create for self and, and, and add to the community with what you do and interchange um, equally. Yeah, we have a lot of people with that democratic mind that literally says the government owes us. This is what they did. And I'm not going to say that they don't owe black people reparations of what they did. A lot of people owe us reparations all over the damn world. That's not what I'm saying. But regardless, if you have a competitor that has beaten you and demolished you you can't keep saying oh you owe me this you owe me that and they're gonna they don't care they don't care they never cared about you from the beginning especially the way they brought us from many of the black tribes of judah here okay so i'm, I'm sharing this with you because this is important because a lot of you depend on this system a lot of you believe that you cannot make it without this system so for a bill something like this to actually be recalled call that's something that you guys really need to think about so let's get into it i gave you a mouthful hold on we're gonna listen to this this gentleman and I hope he can get his words together because sometimes he be saying the worst is he just fucking say anything. Today, the court once again walked away from decades of precedent, but we cannot let the decision be a permanent setback for the country. 
A landmark decision today from the U.S. Supreme Court ruling against affirmative action in college admissions, banning race as a factor. Today's action expected to impact the future generations of college students and campus life. And getting into college just got a lot harder for minorities because of today's ruling. Our Harry Boomer has a local reaction to this controversial decision. Not knowing if I'll be able to have a place somewhere is like scary. It's scary. Jornay Booker I mean, is really a student at Cleveland State University, a predominantly white institution or PWI. Outside of the fact that I am qualified, this is a PWI. So having minorities at the school is probably like very important for them. So, you know, uh, affirmative action was definitely something that was important. And now it's just like, it doesn't matter. And it's like upsetting. It's scary, especially because I want to go on to be into law school. I'm Dr. Ronnie Dunn. I am the executive director of the Diversity Institute and the Maxine Goodman Levan College of Public Affairs and Education, where I'm also an associate professor of urban studies. The 6-3 conservative majority of the U.S. Supreme Court rolled back affirmative action today, saying race should not be a factor. It's going to have a major impact on minority enrollment at many colleges and universities. Obviously, I'm very disappointed at that ruling. Uh, it will be devastating, to just being candid, about the impact that it will have on the admissions of students of color, particularly African-American and Latino, Latinx students. Not being able to see a lot of your people here, it's like, you know, it puts you on a a different space. Here in Ohio, with this pending bill, uh, pro uh, Senate Bill 83, to basically eradicate any uh, use of diversity, equity, and inclusion in higher ed, um, we're rolling back the clock to the days of Jim Crow. Affirmative action put in place 45 years ago after the Alan Bakke decision. Many people think it was about quotas. It never was. It was about inclusion and more people getting educated. That now majorly at risk. All right. So I just want to address a few things in this actual live. Let me put myself on the screen. I want to say first and foremost, young lady, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And I will say it is. Uh, don't. Okay. Okay. Let me just back that statement up. Okay. Let's back up. Let's back up. First and foremost, I'm going to tell you as a brown melanated woman, I went to a majority black college in my area in Newark. So I didn't get to experience so much of that feeling. But I think I'm feeling that feeling when she talks about where you go to a major institution is only a little bit of us. Uh, most recently, my daughter has been accepted to a major college out here in Georgia. And, you know, when we went up there to in-house day, Literally, it was like less than 1% Black people, okay? You know, um, there were some weird white ladies looking at me, staring. I'm staring at them. They like, <laughs> they start laughing because you're not about to intimidate me. What the fuck is going on? Excuse me. I'm just saying the things that I was feeling like, what is going on here? I'm an empath. You know, I had another Caucasian lady be rude to me. We literally going in the door. Her family's behind me, behind us. And she feels like she just... Mm cut in front of me and threw me off, you know? And I was like, well, what, what the hell? You know, and then she totally ignored the situation. Now I'm not gonna tell y'all what I did, but I'm gonna let you know, you ain't gonna be bossing my black ass around just to let you know. So I was really feeling uncomfortable to a certain extent with my daughter actually wanting to go to this school. I'm just gonna be honest, but she wants to go because of her major and because of the academic um, uh, program that they offer. Now, what I would say this to Black people, the reason why this is very important is because we don't have a lot of major institution that has the high scale academic or rigorous program, okay? Because the HBCU, just because it's historically Black college doesn't mean that the program curriculum and these programs that they offer there are competitive for us or even catapult us in the positions to get through their system, okay? A lot of us come in on entry level after leaving these particular colleges and 
um, we get a higher chance of entering above an entry level when you go to historically white schools, okay? This is why you have some Black people that opt to do that, you know? So with that goes to say, I will highlight and respect the fact that it is a scary feeling. And that's why I don't opt to actually go to a majority white school because I feel like um, they really don't, it, it's really not for us, you know, and the only reason why they opened the door for us was to meet the affirmative action bill. What's scary to me is that, is being somewhere where people don't want you. That's fine. And I tell you, y'all know I'm Big True and Rumble, well, more so Big True, you know, very diverse, uh, a lot of white people on Big True, and we start, we feel each other. Because it's a sense of freedom and understanding. I don't mind being living separate, but equal. You know what I'm saying? You could do you, I could do me. But to infringe on my success is the issue. To practice racism is the issue. That is the problem. Now, if we had an equal opportunity chance to actually make institutions that's not blackball, i.e. example, the video that we released yesterday, highlighting Ice Cube and the big three, talking about how he wants to just say, hey, like, come on, NBA, let's just play fair. You know what I'm saying? And it's not that I want to play with you. Just stop trying to do things in the background. This happens in very in a lot of industries as well. OK, so um, I know I'm kind of straying off, but even when we go to have our own institutions, we have issues. So that's what I'm saying. If you want to move forward with these type of bills and these type of things in America, Black people need to be prepared. You really need to pay attention to the situation that you're in. I'm just going to keep it real. You really need to pay attention to the situation you're in because, as they say, it seems like they're rolling back to slavery, uh, to the times of segregation. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm not going to fight a nation on their heart. You can't change the heart of people. And even if when these bills are put into place, it's token, it's tokenism. We still don't get as far as we would like to do as a nation. So I really, it really, that's how I look at these things, but I'm coming at it from a realistic perspective because I know my people are deeply embedded into the system in which I was, in which I am, I have no choice. I went to college too. You know, I had to pay my college off myself. That's how I got my trade as a nurse. You know, you, you got to do what you got to do to fit into the system. But now there's going to be, you know, basically no regulations on a nation of people who in their heart don't like you. Now, if you're not part of that nation of people and you find yourself to have of the uh, light complexion, it's like, like this, I'm not talking to you. But if you are of the others, and you have a soul of Esau, I'm talking to you. You see what I'm saying? Esau is not a person or a color. It's actually a soul, a soul of Esau. Esau was bad, okay? So now she talks about being scary. I gave y'all a little uh, example of, I understand how she feel. Um, the young lady, they don't need you. They don't need you. The reason why I believe that these white owned colleges don't need us because now that the law is pulled back, they don't have any federal regulations that's, you know, holding them from losing funding. So they don't need you. It's not that much money that we're bringing into the college being such a low percentage. It was just because they wanted it to be politically correct. They never wanted to educate us as Black people. And that is what I'm going to roll into next. Okay. They were forced. We can always educate ourselves. This young lady said, oh, I'm afraid because I want to be a lawyer. Go read the damn law books. Everything is right there in public information. You can get a whole um, law program, the outline, figure out what actual classes they teach. Go find every single book, read them shits to yourself and get self-tested. -te That's what I actually been doing, okay? Because I was going to go to law school. I got, um, I got accepted to law school. And financially, I couldn't do it as a single mother, but I love to learn. So as a legal nursing consultant, this is what I did. This is how I know. This is where I get the books. I ordered a book. I ordered a book. Sometimes they have their syllabus right there online. So ma'am, never think that you can't learn something as well as people can represent themselves. You see what I'm saying? You can teach people to represent themselves. There's always a world of being self-sufficient. I'm just going to keep it real because those comments was brought to me like I'm some type of sucker duck. 
Like I'm a person that's dependent on shit. I'm not dependent on nothing. It's the hustle and bustle here today, not here tomorrow. That's that's I learned that definitely from nursing. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, I think those are some of the things that I wanted to address in that particular uh, video. But let's move on and see what Mister Biden got to say with his old crazy self. Who's this? No. Okay, so we got the election coming up, and this is where they're about to um string you in, black people. They about to ask for your votes now. Guess who we got talking about? Guess who we have making a comment on the affirmative action? Pence. He probably coming in to be the vice president again or whatever he's trying to do. So they have something to say about this. And allegedly, they feel like it's taking us back to Supreme Court decisions, uh, specifically, you, specifically the decision uh, ending affirmative action as we know it. Hey. Uh, I understand you fully support this decision, but if the end result... Oh is that America's most selective colleges and universities have. I mixed that up. They don't want your vote, black people. They don't want, obviously, what Mr. Um, Amos Wilson, as well as Dr. Claude Anderson has said many times, we're going to be phased out of society where they don't need our vote. They don't need our manpower. And you're seeing this maybe a very uncomfortable situation or a comfortable conversation, black people, but it is what it is. Now, to my white people who don't believe that this is happening or don't agree with it, you're just going to have to bite your teeth and listen because I'm going to have to tell what's really going on. You know, and if you stand with us, you get your ass in the line with us and fight as far as what black people should be fighting for. And that's economic freedom and equality. Let's go. Fewer black and Hispanic students. Is that a problem for America? Well, look, I, I think uh, no. I couldn't be more proud of the progress we've made toward a more perfect. He said no. We got we got immigrants coming in. You're being replaced. But they're not going to only replace us, black America. They're going to replace the white liberals. They're going to replace the white extremists as well. They are talking about this, too, because they see the writing on the wall union in, in my lifetime, the, the Civil Rights Acts in the 1960s. Uh, and I, I think there was a time for affirmative action, John, uh, where to open the doors of our colleges and universities to minority students and particularly african American. He said open the doors because the doors was closed 45 years ago. My mama older than 45. I'm 39. I'm 39. How do you? Okay. Really look at that situation and think about Americans who may have been denied access, but I think those days are over. You know, it was Justice uh, Sandra Day O'Connor who, more than 20 years ago, said that she thought affirmative action would go away in 25 years. It it went away a little sooner than that. And I think that's a tribute uh, to our minority students, the incredible accomplishments of of African Americans and Asian Americans. Uh, in this country and Hispanic Americans uh, speaks for itself. I'm going to stop there because statistically speaking, when you do the numbers in these colleges, you're going to see what it is. Now, the re one of the other reasons, this is not only for black people because there have been other, other nations. I'm just going to give this real. There's been other nations that roll on the back of affirmative actions that y'all didn't even realize. And that has been the Chinese people. So when you go and look at the statistics of these uh, historically white colleges, they have a whole bunch of Chinese people, which is turning into a national security issue for our government, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. OK, this is this is just some of the things that just just come together in my mind because they talk about it and all these things connect. OK, so they're not only doing this and it will affect us. But I think they're more pushing it as well because they see that other nations are able to come in and based on this affirmative action bills, the changes to meet the quota and the, in the statistics of people, they adjust it. And more and more, it, it, it makes um, minorities start to balance out with the Europeans or Caucasians, okay? And that's not what they want. That's not that that it is what it is. I just gotta keep it real. So black people, you're in a little situation because 
And I really believe institutions we have. We don't really have great institutions. We have a few historically black owned colleges and this is going to affect you. OK, it's going to affect you. It is what it is. A lot of uh, states are showing their true colors. And you know what? I'm not mad at racism. I mean, you know what? I'm going to say this. Y'all like, what the fuck did she just say that? No, because you know what? I don't I don't care because I'm going to find a way to separate and allow God to deal with you. You can't have a whole bunch of hate in your heart, do a whole bunch of stuff to other people and never think that you ain't going to get no judgment. I want to stay away from people who like that, honestly. I don't want to be in a building with coworkers who don't like me, who secretly put me in bad situations, um, sabotage, and you don't get the job or you don't get the raise because you're working so hard. And just because, you know, Susie can't be there. I don't want to be there. I don't know about you. Maybe you guys want to be there. But hey, like I said, I'm not a Democratic type of Black person. I'm a Republic, not Republican type person where like I feel like I'm going to do for myself. I explained to you if I couldn't go to college because I got two kids to take to college and I, I got into the law program. I'm just going to read books myself. I'm just going to read it. So when I go in front of them judges and the people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know what I'm talking about and I'm going to ask questions. So let me see if I got anything to add on. Yeah, let me, oh my God. Let's listen to, um, that's Pence. Now we're going to listen to what Biden, because I thought that was Biden I was about to show y'all, but actually that was the Pence clip. Let's see what Mr. Biden got to say. Let's see if he's trying to save his votes based on this affirmative action thing. You know he is. The Republicans said, F y'all, y'all going to end up dealing with us anyway. That's what the Republicans said. That's what Prince, Prince Pence said. He like, whatever. He like, at the end of the day, we still going to run the house. And at the end of the day, the other side is our color, not red, but of Europe. Y'all going to work together anyway. That's how Pence, that's how I think that's how the Republicans look at it. He like, eventually, we just going to stick to our shit because the Democrats going to have to fold. They don't, they don't care about black people. That's just all the hopes. That's just a hope. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do. Let's go. Let's look at this guy. Years, 445 years, the United States Supreme Court. Oh God! Has recognized that college is freedom to decide how how to build diverse student bodies, to meet the responsibility of opening doors of opportunity for every single American. <clears throat> in case after case, including recently, uh, just as a few years ago in 2016, the court has affirmed and reaffirmed this view that colleges could use race not as a determinative factor for admission, but as one of the factors among many in deciding who to admit. From a, quali from a qualified, already qualified pool of applicants. Exactly. Today, the court once again walked away from decades of precedent and make, as the dissent has made clear. Let me just pause there because that highlights what I said in my response. I never said black people wasn't qualified. It's the, it was the system that set up. He said, I'm going to give it to them. It's just the fact that they're not. Your name is Shanquita? Nope. Your name is Bonquita? Nope, that that is that. That's the wrong name. Y'all know I'm being stereotypical. Your name is um, like with me. My name, my first name is Siobhan. So they don't know until I get there because I look good on paper. But once they see black girl, they start questioning shit, and they hear my voice. They be like, "Oh damn!" I get in a lot of places, but once I start talking, they be like, "Oh shit!" She get out of here. She's a rebel. Rebel for God. Let's go. The sense states in today's decision, quote, rolls back decades of precedent and momentous progress, end of quote. I agree with that statement from the dissent. Or from the dissent. <clears throat> the court has effectively ended affirmative action in college admissions. And I strongly, strongly disagree with the court's decision. Yeah. Because affirmative action is so misunderstood, I want to be clear, make sure everybody's clear about what the law has been and what it has not been until today. Many people wrongly believe that affirmative action allows unqualified students, unqualified students to be admitted ahead of qualified students. Thank you. This is not, this is not how college admissions work. Rather, colleges set out standards for admission and every student, every student has to meet those standards. Then and only then, after first meeting the qualifications required by the school, do college look at other factors in addition to the grades. Now, that's how they supposed to do it, okay? I'm just going to be honest. That's how the colleges are supposed to do it, but that's not always what happens. Y'all know I'm a real estate investor. 
So one of the things is real estate uh, discrimination. There were actually people who were in positions, even after bills and laws has been put in place, that would systematically deny people of minority, pe Black people, to participate. We, we know about the GI Bill. OK, things like that. So let's just keep that in mind. I respect what he's saying because that's how it's supposed to be set up. But when you have the heart of hate, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. There's people who really just hate. I, I don't I don't understand the hate, but it is what it is. I learned to accept it at this point because I just feel like everybody had a judgment. And I'm not about to be fighting with you to make you love me. When you just God gonna make you figure it out on your own, because I gotta figure out my own shit. I'll be having issues loving myself and dealing with the regular people in my life. They gotta deal with another nation that hate me doing shit. I'll be like, God, no, just separate me. Just separate me. Let them figure it out. I figure it out when we together, treat them good. They better treat me good. Cause if I sense it, if I smell it, I'm calling it out. And y'all know, that's why a lot of y'all scared to comment because the shit I say, y'all be like, oh, she walking with the spirit. She walking with the, mm, the judging and the, the judgment. No, it ain't me, it's God. So even the hate that I, fa I face, I told you, I face the hate. I face the hate. That's why I could talk about it. I had patients to call me nigga, 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 nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. They used to spit on people. Texts and nurses was, wouldn't want to have nothing to do with it. I'll come in there like, baby. Yo, do you want this medicine? Because these other people ain't going to never touch you for the whole shit. You will die in here and they will never touch you. You going you gonna to get right? What we about to do? Because if you spit on me, I'm your last motherfucking hope. You know what that guy said to me? You know what he said? This is the racism that I face as a nurse. I got to share it with you. He was like, fuck wrong with you? I said, huh? I was about to walk out. I said, this motherfucker ain't about to spit on me because I didn't try to talk to him, told him to chill. He's still talking shit. I'm giving you a warning. You better make a verbal agree with me before I, because I'm not about to do this. He said, fuck wrong with you. I said, excuse me? He said, why are you so fucking nice? I said, huh? I said, listen, God going to judge you, not me. But if you do something to me, then I'm going to have to protect myself. You, whatever you went through, how you feel in your heart, whatever demons in and ancestry curse is going to resonate through your ass, do it. But just keep it away from me. If we ought to function together today, for this second, let's just function. And you know what he said? Okay. Okay. Shriveled up in the bed like this. Probably shriveled up because God put his ass in there. I said, okay, cool. What we about to do? You going to spit? He like, no. I was like, cool. I'm about to give you this medicine. It's crushed up. Going to put the head of the bed up. Home. Boom. He eating it. He eating it. Turn around like. I said, so you good? You wet? You need to be changed? Yeah, I'm wet. I said, the text ain't coming here since when? Since this afternoon, right? No. I said, because they hate you, because you hate them. But guess what? I got you. So what we about to do, I'm going to change you by myself, because ain't nobody else going to come up in this motherfucker with me. Because they hate you, because you hate them, because you've been spitting on them, calling them nigga, 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 nigga. And I know his goal contract itself. This is one of my nurse, first nursing positions. I the, turned him to one side, cleaned that butt, turned him to the other side, cleaned that butt. And he said, thank you. Thank you. I said, your butt is going to be red and open if you can't be in like this. Look, you get, you, you get scoriated already. Judgment. Now, I ain't said in those type of, you know, words. But this was the conversation I had. So when I speak, y'all, I'm speaking from a place that I know. Okay? And at the end of the day, I'm not going to let y'all fuel me up with that shit. Because all your are there is, oh, I'm fucking, yeah, fucking piece of shirt. Da, 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 da. That's all he talk about. I'm like, okay, he ain't going to change. Fuck him. Let him get judged. Such as race. The way it works in practice is this. The colleges first established qualified pool of candidates based on meeting certain grade, test scores, and other criteria. Allegedly. Then and only then, then and only then, it is from this pool of applicants, all of whom have already met the school standards, that the class is chosen after weighing a wide range of factors, among them being race. Let me just stop there, because I think that what Joe Biden is doing right now is trying to play both sides. He needs both votes. So he's trying to say, listen, don't worry, black people. Minority people, you don't have nothing to worry about because you have the academic skills. You have it. You got the background. But 
there's other factors in determining who was part of institutions, not only color, but tincture. I had that presented to me most recently. I didn't even know that these people look at tincture. And tincture is what I got, you know, like this, the ah, uh, my voice, the the hair, the this color. It's like a tincture, like your tint. Sure. Okay. And if that tincture does not fit in, as far as having a they, you know, maybe had a behavior problem, maybe something happened. They look at black people with behavior problems much different from white people. Cause it's just in the soul. So I think he's just trying to like play both fields. If you listen to what Mr. Biden is saying, but I'm not falling for him. I'm not falling for him. You don't get my vote. You ain't get it the first time. You know, I've always believed that one of the greatest threats to America, you're tired of hearing me say is our diversity. But I believe that. If you have any doubt about this, just look at the United States military. The finest fighting force in the history of the world it's been a model of diversity. Let's stop there, because every time he says something, I got something to say back. Now, first and foremost, I just talked about the GI Bill. I didn't even talk about how Black people actually fought to go to the Army and then be in the service and, you know, in, in Tuskegee Airmen and all them. Fight for equality while they're in there. Literally fighting for the nation freedom and while you're, you're double fighting for your freedom. Okay? 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 How hard is that? So I don't think um, uh, uh, that was an easy process, but I will say again, when you have people who strategize like the Europeans does, it is what it is, what they do is, hey, all right, we're going to let these people in because we need more manpower. We're going to come on in. We're going to give them a little bit of something. They're going to help us fight because... We're going to tell you why they're going to let, they let us in. Because we're going to go right into this right now. We're going to move move on, take this off the screen. You know why they let us in? Because they did shit like this. And they knew the power behind black people. And I'm going to close off on this, on that note, on this note right here. Okay, hold up. What's this right here? We're going to close off on this note. Because I, I, I'm going to talk my stuff. But there's a reason why we suppress black people. Okay. They know, know what they did. They know what they did. And some of us still have this bloodline right here running through us because of breathing. Let's go. Fought specifically for the role of a breeder. Because he stood at 2 meters and 18 centimeters tall, they believed his children would be strong. He was highly intelligent and obedient. As a result, while the other slaves worked in the fields and performed heavy labor, Padasika had the role of engaging in relations with hundreds of different women every day. As Padasika's children were consistently born strong and healthy, he began to receive increasing privileges. He passed away in 1958, leaving behind over 200 children. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. It's 200 of them, and grandkids, and great-grandkids running around here with this. All right, Judah. You are very strong. You are very wise. You don't need anybody. You just need to love yourself. Get your mind right. Read some damn books. Get off the internet and keep it moving. Because obviously there's a system being set up here in America. And we ain't part of the club. How about that? I'm sorry. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted. And you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay 